do we actually need JWT for protecting our APIs in Next.js version 13? Welcome back to Sakura Dev channel and this tutorial is divided into four sections. In the first section, I'm going to quickly show you how I have set up the Next auth with Next.js app and in the second section, I'm going to show you how we can protect our API rights with get server session and in the third section, I'm going to show you how you can protect your APIs with JWT and in the last section, I will tell you which one is better for which situation. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so now let me first show you a quick tour of our application. We have a Next.js version 13 application and we have installed the Next Auth package inside it. So here inside the app directory, we have added the Next Auth route handler. I assume that you have some basic understanding of the Next Auth and you know how you can configure the Next Auth with Next.js version 13. But if you don't, I highly recommend to watch this tutorial, which its link is now on the screen to get some basic understanding of of what is next off and how we can configure it with the next year's version 13. So let's get back to our tutorial. Here we have the next off handler and we have added the credentials provider, which means that we are going to authenticate our users with a username and password. And then we have the authorized function inside the credentials provider, which send a post request to this slash API slash login, which I will explain in a second. We just check if such a user with this username and password is existed in our database and if that that's the case, it will return the user object and if it's not, it just return a 401 error message. Okay, and then we have export the handler as get function and also handler as the post function because we are in the Next.js version 13 app directory. Okay, so now let's quickly show you what's going on in the login API, which we call here inside the authorized function of the credentials provider. So here we have a post API endpoint, which takes the username and password inside its body. And then with Prisma, it checks inside the database if such a username and password is existed. And if that's the case, it will just return the user object. And if it doesn't find such a user, it will return a 401 error message. So now let's go to the next section of our application, which is how we can protect our API routes with get server session of the next auth. So here as a first step, we just create an API. So I'm gonna name it the protected, okay? And then inside it, I'm gonna create the route.ts file. So actually here we are going to export a get function, function get, okay? And we just return a new response with the protect me message. Okay, so it's a really dummy API. I just wanna show you how we can protect this API from unauthenticated users. So the first option is to use get server session. So in order to do that, first we need to get the session from the get server session function. So I'm gonna say const session equals to await get server session which comes from the next off and here since we are using a wait keyword here we should turn this function to an async function okay so now we can check that if session is existed and session has a user inside it okay we can say that the user has logged in into our application so now we just return the response okay you have logged in okay and else if this condition is falsy which means that the user is not authenticated we can return a unauthorized error message so here we just return a new response which says that unauthorized and we just set the status code of this response to the 401 okay so now let me run the application and before doing that let me correct the spelling of the unauthorized okay so now now let's run the application let's open up the browser okay so as you can see we have a home page here which says the welcome to sakura dev channel so if you're still watching this tutorial please hit the like button it will take you just few milliseconds but it will make someone happy really happy <laughs> so let's go back to our tutorial let's click on the sign in here we are headed to the login page it's my username and it is my password which is one two three okay let's click on the sign in and now the authorized 
customize function will be called. So as you can see, the name of the user is on the app bar, which means that the user is authenticated. So first, let me again sign out and let's call the protected API. It is on the localhost 3000 API slash protected. It returns us a unauthorized message, which makes sense because we have sign out from our application. So let's go back to the home page and click on the sign in and sign in into our application. Okay, so now again, let's go to the protected page and you can see the right message here, which says that, okay, you have logged in. So yeah, in this easy way, with get server session inside our API endpoints, we can check if the user is authenticated or not. So we can protect our APIs from unauthenticated users. So now we are going to use the next option for protecting our APIs, which is using JWT. Okay, so first we need to install the JSON Web Token package. So here, let me clear this up and I'm going to say npm i JSON Web Token. Okay, so let's install this and then we need to install the types of the JSON Web Token. And here I'm going to say npm i d, which means that it's a dev dependency, and then add types slash JSON Web Token. Okay, so let's close this off and then we need to create a secret key for creating and decoding the JWTs. So I go to the env file as you can see we have the secret key here so as the next step i go to the lib directory and here create a file named jwt.ts so inside this file i'm going to define two functions the first one for signing or creating a jwt access token and the second one is for verifying the JWT. So first of all, we need to define an interface for sign option. It will be needed in a second. It has a expire in, which is a string or number. So it actually determines the expiry time of our JWT. And then we are going to define a default sign option, which its type is this interface. And then inside it, we set the expire in to one edge, which stands for one hour. Okay, so now let's create our first function, which is sign JWT access token. So I'm going to export this function, sign JWT access token, and then it takes the payload, which its type is JWT payload, which comes from the JSON web token. I will show you how you can use this. And then we need to define the second parameter for this function, which is options, which its type is sign option, which we have defined earlier here. And let's set its default value to the default sign in option, which is this object that we have defined earlier. Okay, so now let's define the body of this function. Okay, so first we need to get the secret key from our env file. So I'm going to say const secret key equals to process dot env dot secret key so as you can see we have a auto completion for my env variables and if you want to know how you can create this type safety and auto completion for your env variables watch this video which its link is now on the screen okay so i choose the secret key here and then we need to sign or create our jwt token so i'm going to say const token equals to jwt which comes from the json web token so here let's import it jwt okay and then call the sign function from the jwt object okay and we just pass the payload here and our secret key okay and then our option object so in this way we can create a jwt based on the payload that we pass through this sign in jwt access token and then we just need to return this token so i just return the token from this function okay so this is our first function the next function is for verifying the jwt so it actually check if the jwt is valid or not okay so here I'm going to export a function called verify JWT. It takes the token, which is going to be a string. So we pass the JWT access token as a string to this function. And then inside it, I'm going to put a try catch block here. Okay. And in case of any error, we just console dot error the error. Okay, we just log the error to the console of our server. So let's define the functionality of this function. First, we need to get the secret key. So here I just copy this statement here. It retrieved the secret key from our env variable. And then I'm going to define a variable called decoded. I'm going to say const decoded and set it to jwt.verify function. 
and here we just pass the token to it and also our secret key so it actually verify the token based on the provided secret key if the token is valid it just extract the payload data from the token and returns it to the decoded object and if the token is not valid it just throw an error okay so here we just need to return the decoded object and we're going to convert it to the jwt payload okay so now we're done with our jwt module let's close this jwt file and go to our login api and here when the provided username and password is correct we create an access token and put it along the user object and return it to the next off session so here we just need to create an access token based on the user data so i'm going to say const access token okay and set it to sign jwt function that we have just created inside the jwt.ts file so we pass the user without path object as the payload to this sign jwt access token and since the options have a default value we don't need to specify the sign option for this function okay so here we put the access token alongside with the user without path in the result object and then return it to the next off session okay so i open up the insomnia here as you can see we have a get request to the slash api slash login we just need to provide the username and password so here i'm going to say username and set it to sakura at gmail.com and also we need to provide a password okay and set it to one two three okay so if i click on the send okay so it's a post api so we need to pass the post request to it if i click on the send again it returns the user object along with a access token so let me send the wrong password here click on the send it returns an unauthenticated error so let's fix the password and send a request again and we have the access token inside it now we are going to create another api endpoint for our application so here inside the api i'm going to create a endpoint i'm going to call it jwt protected okay and then inside it we're going to create our route.ts file let's just copy the get function from the protected route and paste it here inside the jwt protected we don't need the get server session so here we just remove this line here and let's remove it from the if statement here and i'm going to create a request parameter for our get function which its type is request and here the first thing we should do is to extract the access token from the header of this get api so every request to this get api must have a access token header inside it in order to be able to access to this api and if it doesn't have this header inside it we just reject it okay so in order to access to the access token header i'm going to say const access token and set it to request dot headers dot get it's a map object and then we put the authorization key here okay and then here inside our if statement we can check if the access token is not undefined and verify jwt returns a value so we pass the access token to this verify jwt so actually we are saying that if the access token is inside the header of the request and then the access token is valid just return our desired response okay you have logged in and if it's not we just return a 401 unauthorized message so let's save this and go back to insomnia and let's create another request let's rename it to the jwt protected okay and let's copy this it is on the api slash jwt protected so let's send the request without providing the authorization header to see what it returns so as you can see it returns a unauthorized message to us so inside the header let's create the authorization header okay so let's go back to our api we're at and make the first letter of the authorization to the uppercase and then i go back to the login request and copy this access token here and then here i just paste it so now let's send the request and you can see okay you have logged in so let's tamper with the authorization okay it's not valid anymore because we change it and you can see this time it returns to us a unauthorized message so this is the second way that we can protect our api with jwt's so a lot of you dear subscribers asked me what is the difference between the get server session way and jwt way 
of protecting our API in Next.js. So let me show you what is the difference. So let's go back to our application here. Let's sign in. As you can see, we have sign in. And if I go to the API slash protected, which is protected with the get server session, you can see the right message, which means that we are authenticated in our application. So now let's go back to our Insomnia, which is kind of the third party application and let's call the protected API. So let's duplicate this JWT protected and call it just protected. Okay. It will send the request to the protected API and let's delete this authorization header because it doesn't need it. Okay. So before sending the request, let's go back to our browser. You can see we have sign in into our application. Let's go back to the insomnia, which is a, which is our third party client and send a get request to the protected API with get server session. And you can see, even though we are authenticated in the browser, it returns us the unauthorized message in the third party application. So if you're protecting your APIs with the get server session, you can only call them in the browser that you have signed in. You can't call them from the third party application. For example, if you have a mobile version of your application, you can't consume your Next.js API from that application. So in order to be able to call your APIs from the third party application like mobile apps, you have to protect your APIs with JWT. So this is the advantage of using the JWT protection for your APIs over the get server session. If you don't have any third party apps that consume your APIs, just go with the get server session. But if you're going to create a third party app that is going to consume your Next.js API, go for the JWT protection for your API. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. You saw that how you can protect your API with get server session and also with JWT. And before ending this video, let me tell you that I am now creating a full playlist for Drizzle ORM, which is a really performant and popular ORM. You can check it out if you want to use it inside your Next.js application. It is really performant and this tutorial will teach you everything you need to know to get started with Drizzle ORM in Next.js. Okay, so stay tuned for my next video. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.